In this lesson, we're talking about homeostasis. We are in unit two, topic one, and just keep in mind, there are quite a lot of syllabus uh, dot points for this point, and we are in chapter six of Pearson. Okay, let's talk about homeostasis. Homeo means similar, stasis means stable. So homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a stable internal environment in the face of a constantly changing external environment. So we talk about a stable internal environment. It doesn't mean that it stays the same all the time. It just means it's trying to maintain approximately in the same range. Now, every organism has a bit of a tolerance range for what they consider normal or those conditions in which they live. So dynamic equilibrium is achieved where it's fluctuating up and down a little bit, but it's trying to remain as centered as possible within that normal range. So if we're talking uh, disease here, where, you know, yes, our body temperature may go up and down, but it's only uh, dangerous when it gets outside of that area. And you often see things that are related to balance, okay, because homeostasis is all about balance. So you often see that kind of teetering seesaw point uh, in diagrams as well. Okay. This is the way I like to think about homeostasis. There's a constant cycle where the body has cause, effect, detect, and correct. So the external stimuli can change. Therefore, we're causing a disturbance in the, in the normal, in the body, and in just in the normal planned functioning of the body. Your body has to detect what's going on, and then it's going to try to correct this by bringing systems back to normal ranges. But this cycle is going to keep going over and over and over. It's never, ever stopping. Your body tries to con uh, sorry detect and correct the problems and maintain that dynamic equilibrium using the nervous system and the endocrine system. They're the main two things. So if we start with cause and effect, um, so ways our bodies can get out of balance, so there's that balance again, there's multiple causes of these, and most of them are pretty normal day-to-day -day issues. So we're talking dehydration, low or high uh, blood gases, low or high blood glucose, blood pressure, body temperature, and the pH of your bloodstream or your stomach. So, you know, your low blood sugar is nice and simple if it's been, you know, many hours since your last meal, dehydration if you haven't had enough fluid that day. Obviously, they become um, entirely out of normal tolerance ranges, and that's when that problem can can occur but obviously if you're still alive at the end of the day even though you haven't had much water you, your body is managing detection is a really important part of this and, and your body can't do the correction mechanism if it hasn't detected there's a problem at all to start with so our body uses the nervous system and the endocrine system to detect and correct uh, yeah, detect and correct these things so uh, nervous stimuli uh, the nervous system sorry might look um, at external receptors so like on your skin you can feel pain you can uh, feel heat all those things uh, your eye obviously so your five kinds of senses are external uh, stimuli um, or stim simulated by the external stimuli I suppose but there's also parts of your body internally that can detect these things and things like your hypothalamus is a tiny little part of your brain that can actually detect internal changes like your change in your blood temperature or your pressure um, there are so many types of these receptors that do the detection, okay? Um, this is a very short list, uh, and I think a, probably a better way to manage this is to look at it like that, where you've got external and internal detectors, things that are external or paying attention to external sources and those that are paying attention to internal sources, and these are just a few of them. Uh, this is a diagram from your Pearson that goes over quite a lot of them, so you can see straight away the mechanoreceptors, the uh, pressure in the skin, all those kinds of things, there's quite a lot of them. All right, when we talk about correction, our body must correct the environments when they're out of line, uh, within the normal ranges and, you know, outside as well. So if this doesn't occur, normal metabolic functions can't occur. Um, and we're talking like increased temperature here. Um, you know, if we increase our body temperature and we get a fever, there's decreased enzyme activity. And we know that enzymes control pretty much everything in our body. So we have to detect the disturbance uh, in order to figure out if it's outside or inside of normal ranges. And then our body can actually activate these feedback mechanisms. And we're going to talk about feedback mechanisms in the next lesson.